Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Haskin, here with a fan-based podcast, and I'm the fan. And it's based on the music of Uriah Heap and endorsed by the band, which is unbelievable. Every time I say that, I just smile because that is like the coolest thing in the world to me. Uh, you know, there's so many people that you are influenced by as a musician and as a fan of music. And uh, I never thought I'd get the chance to even have a conversation with Mick Box, let alone uh, have helped uh, develop the show with him. It was uh, pretty, pretty amazing. And he's such a great guy, very generous, very friendly really supportive of his fans, too. If you guys haven't checked out his Ask Mick on YouTube on the official Uriah Heap YouTube channel, you really ought to. There is a link on my website to that. He's done uh, over 100 fan questions already, heading uh, close to 110, I think, uh, if I remember right. And uh, he's very honest and open. He doesn't shy away from any uh, any tough topics. He's He's the man as far as I'm concerned. And just a hell of a nice guy. It's such a pleasure to uh, to know him and be able to speak with him from time to time. And uh, yeah, it's a joy doing the show and sharing the music that he's uh, been involved in for the last 50 years with you guys and going in song by song. I hope that uh, I hope you got some rest after yesterday's, uh, what would that be, a quadrap, a quadrap along uh, four four episodes uh, on a on a six minute song, which was amazing, but I had such a good time with Brandon. So grateful he was able to to spare some time to come on the show. He, uh, if you haven't checked out Metallicast, even if you're not a fan of Metallica or don't know much about Metallica, it's a very enjoyable show. You should go check it out. He's very energetic, really loves what he's talking about, and does such a great job on his show. So check that out. There's a link in the show notes. Now, uh, because he was on the show yesterday, and I had a feeling it might run what I thought was a little long instead of a lot long. Uh, I decided to forego the normal Monday gratitude. So since it's Tuesday, I'll catch up with that now. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who has left feedback, who has left reviews, star ratings. Uh, as far as I know, I have seen all of the ones that have shown up as of this recording on uh, iTunes slash Apple Podcasts. Uh, I've seen some comments come through Podbean, and I've had uh, a lot of direct mail come to me, uh, but I haven't had any updates on iTunes, Apple Podcasts in a while. So, uh, but for those of you who have left reviews and uh, and and uh, even just uh, number ratings or star ratings, thank you very, very much. It really does help the show. Um, we've actually been pushed back to the third slot when you go to iTunes, Uriah Heap, and Podcasts. So uh, let's get that number back up to number one be awesome. I mean, it's a show that's just directly dedicated to the band. So uh, there are some really cool people that have helped out financially with the show through the Patreon account, which you can find on the website, scotthaskin.com. Then click on the Uriah Heap link, go down to the bottom. And there are two ways you can help the show out financially. One, you can do a PayPal donation, or you can set up a recurring donation through PayPal, or you can go to the Patreon account where, uh, you know, you get some extra perks. I just today sent out the uh, the prize for the first monthly drawing. The winner, Joe, had a uh, had all the albums already, so there was nothing to get there. So uh, he opted for a deeper or a uh, uh, deep purple, a Uriah Heap uh, podcast mug. And I sent that out today. So he should be getting that in a few days. Very cool. It's a really nice mug, too. Actually, I really like the, the way that it was uh I was going to say designed. I didn't design it. I just slapped the logo on there, let Scott Lazinski design, and he did a great job. But the mug looks really good. It's sturdy. Uh, so that's what he opted for for the first prize. If you want to be eligible for the drawing this month, all you have to do is sign up for the Uriah Heat podcast mailing list, which is also at the bottom of that website. You can sign up there and you'll get an automatic entry for being on the mailing list. However, if you are a Patreon, even at the $1 tier, you are getting two entries into that drawing. Now, here's the real kicker. If you are a Patreon and sign up for the mailing list that I never send mail out to, or very rarely, I should say, I think I've done one so far, uh, you get three entries. So it's up to you. Your fate is in your hands. It doesn't mean you'll win, but you'll get more opportunities to win. You know, get shuffled in with everyone else. And here's the way I do it. 
I have uh, entries for each person. Each uh, entry that they get is a separate entry on a spreadsheet. They're all numbered. And then I use a random number generator to pick the number that corresponds to the winning entry. I go to that line on the spreadsheet. Bam, you're the winner. Just like that. So speaking of our patrons, though, we have some really cool people that uh, have, have gone the extra mile to help me out with the show. And I really appreciate it. At the $5 tier, we have Kenny Wymore. At the $3 tier, we have Peter Voss, Goran Erickson, Frank Thielgard Mortensen. And at the $1 tier, the weather resistant airtight gravesite. Thank you all very much. Uh, I, I don't ever, uh, I hope I don't sound casual when I read that because every time I do it, it really uh, means a lot to me. I appreciate you guys doing what you're doing to help the show out means quite a bit to me. Um, there's some other people too that have contributed. As I mentioned, my graphic artist, Scott Lazinski, who did a great job on the logo, both the black and the white versions of it. Every time, um, you won't see it on Apple Podcasts, but every time uh, there's a different album, I switched the logo from white to black or black to white. Uh, but he did a great job with it. His logo's on the mug and all that. Um, the only thing that he didn't design was the Uriah Heap uh, banner that is on there where it says, endorsed by Uriah Heap. That is their official band logo that Mick was kind enough to send me over to include in the show. However, uh, if you get any of the items that uh, that I have, like the coffee mugs or anything that I might have available down the road, will not have the Uriah Heap logo on it because that would have to be officially licensed, which is a whole different set of nightmares. So uh, that uh, you get the Uriah Heap podcast logo without the Uriah Heap logo, um, but it's still just as good of a piece of merchandise. So uh, also, of course, I have to take a moment to thank Audionamics. I will not do a podcast without Audionamics and IDC, their instant dialogue cleaner, especially living next to the Las Vegas airport, which even now in stricter times still has a good amount of traffic going in and out. And fortunately, as far as I know, you've never heard a plane on the podcast because IDC takes care of all of that for me. Now, another very important person to the show is Dave White, who is Uriah Heap's director of social media. He does all the uh, the official posts. He shares every episode of the show. He's been absolutely fantastic. Hell of a nice guy uh, and, and a great guitarist and keyboard player, too. Very talented musician. And I uh, did a drum track for him not too long ago. Had a lot of fun with that. But uh, yeah, great guy. Somebody who uh, I really enjoy sharing some banter with now and then and greatly appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, also, you know, uh, we have this sort of uh, network of deep dive music podcasts. And the people that got me started into this deep dive would be Nate and John at the Deep Purple Podcast. You could also find The Simple Man at Skinnered Reconsidered Podcast. T-Bone Terry Mathley at T-Bone's Prime Cuts on the other side. He is a few episodes into his new show, and it is fantastic. Rye at Sabbath Bloody Podcast. And of course, Paul, Joe, and David at the Lap of the Pods which is a Queen podcast, if you're not familiar with the reference. I have to say that because I was not familiar with the reference. I don't know that much about Queen, so uh, I've learned er, er, pretty much everything I've learned has been through either the little bit I've listened to them or through the podcast. Very knowledgeable guys have a great banter and great conversation on that show. And as, of course, you heard yesterday, Brandon at Metallicast, uh, I've got his link in the show notes as well. Hell of a show. Hell of a guy. Had so much fun hanging out with him. Uh, that show could have been four hours easily if we uh, if we didn't rein ourselves in a little bit. So I'm I'm glad that we did. And also, you know, uh, Ace, the band's manager, has a podcast called Ace on Music, which you can find on uh, Stitcher Radio and YouTube. And the links, of course, are in the show notes. And if you want to have a good time checking out the live history of bands like Emerson, Lake and Palmer and Deep Purple, check out GottaHearEmAll.com, where our dear friend Allegra has an amazing treasure trove of data on the uh, the touring lives of those bands and some other th uh, little things here and there that you could check out. Uh, very well organized, very detailed and well researched. Great job, Allegra. And uh, so if you guys want to follow the podcast anywhere besides your podcast player, hopefully you're all at least subscribed there. You can follow the show at scotthaskin.com, then click on the Uriah Heat podcast link at the top. And uh, then I've got a, an episode, a, a page for each show and uh, ongoing. I will fill those in as each show gets released, but all the uh, basic data is there for now. May be incorrect, may get modified over time, who knows, but the basic stuff is there. Uh, and obviously any show that's there uh, that has already been released has its own player, as well as the main page having the, uh, the the most recent, I think, 20 episodes. All kinds of great links to Uriah Heap stuff, so go and check that out. On Facebook, you can find us at Uriah Heap Podcast. 
Uh, you can just, you know, once you see that logo, you'll know, the logo, you know, it's the right page. On uh, Twitter, we are at Heap Podcast. On Instagram, at Uriah Heap Podcast. And of course, uh, if you have any business for the show, you can email me at Uriah Heap Podcast at gmail.com. That goes directly to me, you know, until I get so big that I need a staff or person to handle that, which uh, may or may not be ever. So thanks again for everybody who has participated, who uh, has shared their story, for everybody who's given to the show, who's helped out. Uh, it's it's such an amazing network of people that I am uh, just honored to be a part of. So now that I've usually uh, rambled on for my 10 minutes here on the thanks episodes, it seems to take about that uh, that point of the show. It is time to get into the song. The song is called We Got We. According to the Deluxe CD, it is credited to all five members of the current lineup. Gary Thane, Ken Hensley, Lee Kerslake, David Byron, and of course, Mick Box. Here is We Got We from the album Wonder World. What a mysterious and interesting opening. I mean, you have absolutely no idea where the song is going to go. No uh, clue or indication before it just kicks in with this amazing groove. I mean, just absolutely amazing. It kind of reminds me a little bit of maybe something that could have been on Jesus Christ Superstar. There were some really good bass grooves on that album. And uh, yeah, just it just kicks in just all of a sudden. Everything is there. And uh, obviously the bass is predominant right now. And uh, before you know it, we've got vocals coming up right now. Um, they're just they're just digging right into this one, whereas usually, you know, you'd, you'd have quite a good opening before anything uh, major happened. So uh, I was kind of surprised that the music kicked in as quickly as it did, but I really like where it's going. Okay, a lot just happened. First of all, uh, great harmonies on all of the vocals there. Um, feels very much like everyone in the band is just huddled together singing there. And uh, it really sounds good. I like that there's like wet one higher harmony, but not a super high harmony. I think it that lends better to uh, a verse when you're singing it that way. So a uh, good call there. It could have easily been something that they just said, you know what, let's just do the the full harmony through the whole thing. But I really like that they uh, they dropped back a little bit on that and did it to the level that you hear. Uh, but then uh, when the guitars come in, the guitar solo, which is great, I love the feel of it. Um, you also have a, a progression that's going on behind it, which feels like it could be a whole nother part and maybe it will be later on. But I like the way that that plays, because typically when you have a guitar solo, the band just backs it. They don't do uh, anything too progressive, nothing too crazy. They just kind of follow along with like typically a verse without vocals and a guitar solo instead. So this was a, a nice surprise, what you're hearing behind it. It's moving the song along in another direction, whereas you're really just expecting it to be that groove again uh, that uh, Lee Kerslake and Gary Thane are playing so tight together on. Uh, I think there's also some synth bass going on, but I think... That's probably Ken Hensley uh, playing that on keyboard. Like I said in the last song, I thought that there was a little bit of a synth bass in there too. So he might have overdubbed over it. There might have been a pedal. Uh, they might have run the bass through, um, you know, through something to give it that that sound. But in any case, it sounds really good here. Um, I, I love the overall feel of it. The song itself sounds a little bit dry coming off of some of the other songs that we've heard on this album. Um, a little bit less reverby, it sounds like, but it still sounds good. Very cohesive overall.
So another nice unexpected change. The song is really good. It's going in a lot of different directions very quickly. You kind of feel like you can't even grasp onto the railing because as soon as you think you've got a grip on it, uh, the railing changed directions. And uh, and I like it. I, I feel like this is something that if they wanted to do something longer, they had so many parts in here that they could have easily put this into two or three different songs or, uh, you know, one very long song like the Magician's Birthday style where you're going to different segments. But uh, everything in here I'm hearing, I'm really liking. It's got a great groove to it. Uh, even throughout the changes, you don't lose the the tempo. You don't lose the feel of the song anywhere at all. And uh, and I like that nice, solid drumming, of course, from Lee Kerslake. Uh, keyboards are nice and solid. Everything's blended together really well. I rather like the mix on this song, apart from it sounding a little bit dry. I think if they would have put a little bit more reverb on the vocals, it probably would have filled it up a little bit more. Uh, the snare sounds a little bit dry to me, but overall, it's a uh, it's pretty good mix. And uh, well, the mix is solid. I just, you know, like I said, I could use a little bit more reverb, but uh, overall, great song. There's something particularly interesting about the solo and and this part of the song. The solo is very similar to the one that we heard yesterday, where it's using a lot of a uh, bit of a screechy sound, but not uh, piercing the ear, which I like. Um, it's got a lot of, um, you know, it sounds like a whammy bar in there, but a, a lot of higher pitch stuff. And uh, it just sounds really good, fits the song. But I really like the mood behind it, too. I, I don't know exactly why I feel this way, but it feels a little bit like uh, medieval music, you know, and the solo is kind of uh, adding a little bit of a, a, a darkness to it, which I really like. It's, it sounds like it, you know, lyrically, it feels like it's a fairly happy song, but it's just got this edge to it in the music that really kind of contrasts that uh, that notion for me. So I find this song particularly interesting. Another just powerful vocal delivery. And, and I really, I love those harmonies more and more because they're not doubling the lead vocal at all. It's just the lead vocal and almost like, it feels almost like a choral section. And maybe that's part of that medieval feel to it to me, because normally you'd have a couple different layers in the harmonies that we don't quite have here. So it sounds different than what we're used to. And maybe it just sounds a little more haunting to my ears. But in either case, the overall sound is beautiful. I absolutely love it. I think it's such a great balance of vocal. And again, kudos to the engineer for knowing how to mix these vocals with this band. I, you know, that's one of the things that they've shown a lot of strength in. Aside from, you know, my issues with mixing the music has rarely had anything to do with the vocals. It's usually something like a little too much reverb, the snare's not poppy enough for my taste, that sort of thing. But the one thing that this engineer has, has pretty much flawlessly nailed from day one uh, or however many different engineers it's been, has been the mix of the vocals, uh, especially when there's harmonies, that finding that balance that just makes it sound so pleasant, where nothing is too dominating that shouldn't be. Like the lead vocal should be a little bit ahead of at least the backing vocals. And uh, definitely the case here, but it's such a small margin, but it doesn't feel unbalanced at all. It feels actually very nice and pleasing to listen to. So uh, once again, great job.
It's interesting how much Uriah Heep goes to this kind of a lyric where it's just laws and ahs and, and not really uh, any continuation of the story. Yet, because it turns the vocals into an instrument here as opposed to a narrator, it really just fits the song as, as a piece of the music. And I, I love that. They're one of the few bands I can honestly say they could do this as often as they want and I'm probably going to like it. Whereas most bands, I, I tend to get sick of it. Um, you know, like even with the Beatles, the, the kind of stuff that they did, the yeah, yeah, yeahs and all that, I never really got into that. Uh, if there's going to be words or lyrics, I, I want there to be a story. But for some reason, the way that Uriah Heep integrates that into the music, as opposed to it being a lyric, it just works for me. It just it just sits right with me. And I, I notice it, but I don't get tired of it. And that's very strange because normally I would be bored or annoyed with it by this point. But I don't know. I don't know what the magic formula is for these guys, but it just it just sounds pleasing. And uh, I love the way that they're using it here as a, if you if you take away the vocalist as a like I said, as a narrator and just look at them as an instrument now, it, it just works beautifully. love the guitars. I just love the way they sound. That uh, that double tracking just works so well. And again, you know, it's such a great uh, a great register on the fretboard uh, for this song. I really like that he's playing up in the in the uh, higher notes here, where it's not too high, you know, not piercing or anything like that. It just feels good. And then that that uh, second guitar track adding to it so much. It just sounds so good to me. Um, and it's simple, yet Again, there's just that beauty and simplicity that they find so often in their music that I, I really love. It sounds like a lot's going on. And in this case, it, there's not a lot going on. It's just a couple of really a couple of different layers. But because Gary's so active playing bass, it sounds like it's it's doing a lot more than it is. The keyboards are a lot uh, further in the mix in this song. They're really there just thickening things up, but they're not really uh, showing dominance over anything. And at the end here, where we're hearing the guitar being in the foreground and the la-las being behind it, again, if you're looking at the vocals at this point as an instrument as opposed to, uh, you know, telling the story, then it's okay for them to take a back seat. Here's where the voice does not need to be in the foreground. And that was a great uh, that was a great choice from the engineer or whoever it was that made that decision or suggested that. I think it works very well to let the voice take a back seat and just be part of the uh, part of the background. So overall, an another song and another uh, thumbs up or two. Very cool. Uh, I really enjoy this one, and it's one that, uh, like I said, it just it has such a cool groove to it and a lot of parts, a lot of moving things. The song's only like three and a half minutes, and so much happened in that time. Yet I feel like it was over so quickly. Just uh, an amazing piece of art. And uh, and I love it. Great addition to the Wonder World album. So we will be back. Let's see what is today's. Is. Today is Tuesday as you're listening to this, if you're listening to it in real time. If not, you're a time traveler. And congratulations on that. The, uh, the next episode will be Thursday. And I will be back with another Uriah Heap song to talk to you guys about from the album Wonder World. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you in a couple of days. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>